in a weird way, doesn't it feel like a lifetime ago just for Wales in general, right? You know, such a tumultuous year kind of since then, sexism rows, rafts of players leaving the domestic clubs, pay disputes, players threatening to strike, budget cuts. You know, you, you've been around for 15 odd years. How are things gone from that tour to, to now? where it just seems to be in such disarray. Yeah, we always call it Project Reset. They called it something else this time. But it's like it happened like you six years ago when um, they said all this banding system, so it was meant to stop like boys getting paid more, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. And like we've got another thing coming in now and you you feel for the boys that are coming out of contract because it wasn't like, say a business plan, you have a business plan, you have it over three years and you go, right, we need to get here by year three. It was like, right, this is happening now. They didn't finalise it till late. And then the boys who were getting offered contracts were getting offered, well, you could go to a, any job and like not put your body on the line and earn that type of money. Um, so I think that's the hard thing. And then you worry as well, like boys got short mortgages because as a rugby player, you can't get long-term mortgages. And then you've got bills to pay, like family and stuff. And the frightening thing is the, pe- the boys out of contract were waiting for the offer on the table and say he wasn't coming, they look elsewhere and then say you do look to England or wherever, that you were getting offered less. Um, like some boys who were still in contract were lucky, but then it was kind of like, I know in the Wales camp, it was kind of like half divided. Like some boys wanted to strike, some didn't. But if we did strike, the Welsh game would have crumbled because they wouldn't have had revenue from the England game and then vice versa. You're putting pressure on the WRU and all the PRB, etc., to make a decision because that's where it all lied down to. And I know they've gone with a 25 cap rule now, but like some boys have already signed before that and could miss out on playing internationally. It's it's all a bit funny in as far as someone like Henry Thomas, his he's currently playing abroad seven caps can be selected then you got someone incredibly promising in 20 year old joe hawkins with six caps he's not going to be selected he's moving to exeter but yeah. the uncapped max llewellyn moving to gloucester can be like what <laughs> how does it feel inside yeah it's, it's always someone who gets made an example say so, oh, if you sign this and you had a cap you can't play for wales but like it went from 60 to 25 and when you're a youngster coming through, ideally you want to develop, like get like play for your country at the end of the day. And to be told that you can't play because you've had a couple of caps and you've signed for a, a club where he's going to progress. And I know Exeter, a very good team, and he'll develop there, but he's missing out on possibly going to a World Cup in a couple of months' time, which is, for me, like World Cup was always a pinnacle. And then you look... Someone who's playing in France got X amount of caps for England. Um, being able to go into the Welsh squad for the World Cup camp, so it is bizarre. It is like I mean, it's it does sometimes sum up Welsh rugby. I yeah. just think I, I just think it, it just seems to make sense to let just scrap it, get rid of it. I mean, Scotland don't have it, and it works for us. Most of the players still come from within the clubs, but it opens up a load of opportunities for younger players to come through in Wales and you get more people playing professionally. So you can outsource most of those players and get them playing over, you know, overseas in France, in England. They're still going to play at a good level and you yeah. get more chance of players playing in. So just just get rid of it. Would you get yeah. rid of it altogether? Yeah. So back when the 60 cap rule came, it was um, they were going to do like 150 cap for your club. So like the older boys, it's fair enough if you've done 10 years at your club, you could move on and earn money elsewhere if you wanted to. But like the cap rule does, like it suffocates it, like you said, like go and go let the older boys like go elsewhere or boys who have been around for a while, let them go elsewhere, play for a different league experience. And then it does let youngsters come through because You'll see now in Wales, like how many youngsters will have to step up. Because I remember the same time it happened with Cardiff when you had the likes of Rushy, Tito and and all there, Martin Williams, they all left the same year. So it was like the handful of us who are still at the club now, like Lloyd Williams, we came through fairly young and it was kind of a big gap between senior boys and there was a lot of youngsters coming through. 
So the transition, same as that, which you'll see more youngsters come through, but then it's going to be, you need those some senior players there to help nurture them through and develop them. And I, I, it's always it's always something going on in Wales. That's the mad thing. And you just think how easy it would be just to go, yeah, you can go abroad, but then if you stay in Wales, you're getting looked after like health-wise, how many games you're playing a year and, and stuff like that. Instead of like, you go to France, you're playing every game. It doesn't matter if your arm's hanging off by a thread, you're still playing. So you sum it up that way, how you feel feel about it. What do you feel the answer is to I don't know, current conundrum in Welsh rugby? I th- like to me, it, it makes sense to have like some sort of like three year business and idea that it does filter down. So like the boys who are coming through now or who have who are out of contract again offered something decent, and then say boys have got a year, two years left. Everyone by year three is on the same level level playing field, but. The capital is always going to be a hard one. And as a player, you don't want that to be there because it does say you haven't had 25 caps. Like I just reached or just over 30 when I retired and 60 caps was a lot. So you've done a long time playing for Wales, but like 25 is probably more achievable when you think about all the games you play here. You've got Six Nations, Autumn, Summer Tour. You could easily do that in two seasons. Um but then they'll probably change it again. <laughs> it depends how many, I reckon it depends how many boys will be close to that. That's what happened with us with the 150 cap for your your club. It was like, I think it was like 25 of us who were past, like coming up to 150 club for our regions. And then they kind of said, oh no, we're not doing that because a lot of boys would have left, which probably I would have been one of them. I would have gone and experienced this somewhere, but I'm happy to have been a one, one club person. And I'm, I'm glad, glad I didn't go away because I say I didn't get picked up or injuries or wherever I was playing a lot. I was happy to like make sure I, I'd done the right decision, to be honest. So you don't think get rid of the, the cat rule? I think I, mean, yeah, I would say yeah, as a player, you'd love to. But as say uh, to look after players, I think to keep players in Wales is that way. But then it is hard because every, like the budgets have been suffocated and. We have to, like next year. I know Cardiff. We're cutting down our squads, and like 18, 17, 18 players are leaving. Um, oh, wow. And you to compete. You look at Leinster. I I, I don't know if this figure's right. I, I right, but I hear it. They got like fifty odd boy, fifty odd, fifty, sixty boys on their in the on their roster. But then when you look at Cardiff, we had like forty odd. So if you're looking like to rotate players, like say three games make sure they're fresh and stuff you can't do it like do it with I think we're going down to 36 and that's we, what just mentioned, we just mentioned exactly the same there just before you came on that I speak to Cubby and Scott has got something like 32 for next season at the moment you're not gonna you're not gonna last we use 52 players on average a season at Glasgow yeah that's, that's, and that's huge so we're we're probably up at about 60 to be fair with in, in the squad including academy we use 52 players a year you yeah. can't Get through with 32, 36 players. No way. It's not looking good, bro. <laughs> retired at the right time, I think. Yeah. yeah, no, I was we were saying this about the Prem as well, though. Like clubs falling through the the gaps. Like maybe maybe rugby's dying, lads. Stop stop saying that. <laughs> maybe hey, we're in the it. death. This is a rugby rattles. podcast max. We can't get <laughs> it done. Oh, I know I'm feeling existential today, today all right? I just heard a lot of Irish players about to just revisit the Worcester timeline of demise. So, um, yeah, but yeah, sorry. No, there's a solution and we'll find it on this pod today, now. 